Hey guys, this is Sarah with the Craft Yarn Council, and I'm here with Kristen Mangus of Good Knit Kisses. Hey. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about loom knitting, and you can see we have this really awesome setup, so we're going to show you guys a few looms and a few pieces, and just, you know, we're going to rack Kristen's brain about loom knitting. Are you ready? I think so. All right, so my first question for you, Kristen, is what drew you to the wonderful world of loom knitting? Mm. Mm. <laughs> well... I was having a bit of postpartum depression in the late night, and <laughs> I had ordered like some stuff to learn how to knit on needles and crochet, and all my books got in, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed, and I yeah. had nobody near me to teach me. Yeah. So I, I went to the store, I'm like, okay, I'm going to get yarn, and I was so lost, I even bought black yarn, because I'm like, but I wear black all the time. Yeah, right? yeah. Every, everybody does that when they're in the beginning? I don't know. I do. So I like kept <laughs> walking past stuff, you know, because I was in there forever, like, it was seriously 3 a.m. at Walmart, not even kidding. Yeah. I kept walking past these looms and I was like, it's easier, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm gonna try this. Cause I'm a stressed mom, you yeah. know? Like, uh, this is my third kid, you know? And so I picked it up and brought it home. And I mean, I had studied all the other directions and I'm like, I just wanna do something. I wanted like the fast fulfillment of getting something made, right? Yeah. I need it. Yeah. So I did it and I'm like, this is cool. Like, I, I wasn't really hot on the instructions. Yeah. And I was like, you know, it wasn't the best thing. Yeah. But I'm like, there's got to be a way to do something just like needles. I don't mm -hmm. like the, the way that it's telling me to do it. I don't necessarily like the first thing that I made. But I kept mm -hmm. trying and trying. And then I'm like, I'm going to teach people how to do this. Yeah. Because it's so fun. We're so glad you decided to do it. I am. <laughs> All right. So, really quick, do you just want to show us a few of your, like, favorite looms and favorite pieces that you've made or that you brought today? I can. Yeah. Perfect. Um, I will start with probably one of my yeah. most favorite. Um, this particular one is, this is from Knitting Board. It's the all-in-one loom. And uh, these little, there's bolts through here. And when I take this bolt out, I can actually take this piece here and slide it. So it can adjust. Like, I could make a sock on here. I can even buy extra sliders and make two socks at one time. Uh, oh! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, like this will do worsted weight or lightweight yarn. Um, there are some looms, though, that are, like, gauge adjustable. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. So this is, like, a US 7 needle or something. Yeah, or eight. okay. So it just kind of depends on the yarn that you use. Yeah. And, um, you know, you always got to do the swatch. Or yeah. not. Yeah. yeah. Or not. <laughs> or not. Um, <laughs> but I love this one because it's super-duper adjustable, and um, they've even made some other extenders to make it bigger. But they even have, like, the big sister one, like, down here. And it's 28 inches. I'm not sure if I can reach it. It's like 28 inches, but even has like a big 20 peg thing. And it, you could do something really big. So yeah. I've made this big triangular um, with a Pico edge shawl. Yeah, Very you can nice. do Picos on the loom. So those are some of my favorites. Um, and you can even like, I love this one right here. This is from Cindy Wood Looms. They're handmade in the U.S. And you can um, knit a flat panel all the way around and back again. And it's like 60 inches. Or you can skip all these blue pegs and double them oh, and do something wondering. half the width. Yeah, so I was wondering what the blue pegs were. Yeah. Because I'm like so new. I, well, I haven't even learned to loom knit yet. I want to, but this is all very great even for me yeah. and you guys. Cause, but yeah, the blue pegs. Yeah. You skip them. Yeah, and another little hack on this is you can knit it in the round. Like if you just connect it and in the round, you can make a really fast infinity scarf. Oh. I love yeah. those. Well, and Cindy even has like this little wedge thing that hooks up in here and it's a little peg so I can put it at any point and make something really small or something gotcha. really big. Okay. So she's like really thought about it and she's yeah. actually made a lot more now where she changes the pegs and she'll make a different, it just changes the gauge. Yeah. So now you can't change it, but you buy the one. Yeah, exactly. But I do want to mention somebody real quick. This is, um, this is from Kiss Looms. So I'm good at kisses and kiss looms. We kind of get along, right? <laughs> so this one, she's got looms that go all the way down to fine gauge. So if I'm going to use like a zero or one weight, yeah. um, you know, lace yeah. weight, I can do that. Yeah. Make little itty bitty stitches. Yeah. But we can even do really. She's got a dragon loom that I can use like a bulky or super bulky well, weight yarn too. dragon loom. <laughs> she's got one called a kimono, like kimono dragon. <laughs> But um, she even has ones that have a board. So there's like these pin and pegs on here and they separate and I've got one over here and it makes the gauge change. And it's just yeah. really exciting because someone's really come and thought about how we can take needle patterns yeah. and convert them to so the loom exactly. and they look the same. Yeah. Like what I'm wearing right now, this is, a, I call this a cowlick because it looks like a cow in the back and it's like a triangular, yeah. like a, a little cow. <laughs> <laughs> so like I've actually made this for needles and the loom and they look exactly the same. Yeah. 
Like this one up here, this is a Lion Brand. It's with a scarfy yarn. We just did this with Lion Brand. It's on their uh, YouTube channel. So and <laughs> so this, uh, it's like a Rowana style. Like they call it their topper, free spirit topper. And that's made on the loom, and I converted it from uh, the needle pattern. Yeah. Now the button's not on there. That's one of those toggle ones that you just uh, screw yeah. in the thing. But Look yeah. How pretty it is. <laughs> so well, yeah, it's really yeah. Nice. So can you actually show us like? A uh, needle, needle knitted piece versus a loom knitted piece. To I kind can. Of see. There's some over there, I think. Yes. Are there hats? Yes, I've got hats. Thank yes. you. <laughs> She's prompting me. So now I didn't bring the comparable one. This is a needle version, but I've made the loom. It looks identical. Yeah. Like it looks the same. These two right here, side by side. These were from uh, Yarnspirations last year. We did the easy. They have this easy going knit sweater, and I said, let's make a hat. So, needs a hat. <laughs> yeah, so I needle knit this one, and then I loom knit this one, and it, they look, they look very much the same. Um, I probably could have used slightly different gauge on this one. Um, the thing about the looms is I'm limited to what the manufacturers have made. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but I will say, I, I don't have as many kiss looms, but I probably could have got it exactly if I'd used yeah. kiss loom on it. Exactly, yeah. So, I'm just going to say. <laughs> well, awesome. Yeah. So, um, you know, we've been talking a little bit the past few days on Instagram about um, our new revised standards and guidelines, which mm -hmm. is why we're here talking to Kristen today because we um, added loom knitting abbreviations and different information about that into our standards because it's so popular and there's a lot of people doing it. So we wanted to include information about that. So I just wanted to ask you, um, you know, have you seen the loom knitting abbreviations, what do you think about them? Or how do you feel that they're like finally added to standards and guidelines? Oh my gosh, like I can't even tell you because like, okay, so I started, I started my business in 2011 and I actually had written to you guys like a year later, like boldly. And I said, <laughs> we need this, like yeah. please we need this. And there's some, I mean, I got all kinds of things I wanna do, but Anyway, I'm so excited because we it takes a long time to yeah. get these standards in and stuff. There's and so, a lot of standards to go through. Yeah, <laughs> like so it's been in the works for y'all for yeah. th this past year, but they only meet like every so often yeah. for this big stuff. And, and I was just very excited. Yeah. And in fact, the ones that we originally agreed on, and I said, oh, can we include all this other stuff? And they're like, no, I think we're going to make it small. And I was so pleasantly surprised when it came out because they included a ton of the yeah. abbreviations. Um, it just incorporates um, so many of the things that you can do also on needles. And mm -hmm. so it, it yeah. doesn't look like, oh, you can only do these yeah. things. You can do everything. Yeah. You can do all the same things on looms that you can on needles. Mm -hmm. And it's great, especially for people who have dexterity issues. Because yeah. the other thing that I loved about looms is I had carpal tunnel. And I was afraid yeah. that holding it was going to make mm -hmm. a problem for me, which it can. Yeah. Um, I do knit with needles now and crochet. But, yeah, in that beginning stages, yeah. it was... It was hard. So yeah. yeah, but I'm really excited about the standards. Yay. They really thought well about them and considered all things and talked to lots of different designers and companies that put publish those yeah. designs. So that's awesome. We're glad you like them. Yeah. All right. So just for our last uh, question for this Instagram live interview, um, what is something that you wish people knew about loom knitting? Maybe someone who just needle knits or someone who it doesn't even knit at all. What do you yeah. wish they knew about? the world of loom knitting. Oh man, there's so many things to say, but yeah. the, my, what I really want people to know is you can do anything on the loom that you can on needles. Mm -hmm. You really can. You're, you're limited to your, by your imagination. And converting those things over, uh, there are a lot of times people have already converted them. There's a whole community of people out there and uh, it's bigger than you think. Yeah. <laughs> and if I, I just want you to know that if you knit with needles or you crochet, and you find yourself where your body is just not letting you anymore. Mm -hmm. Diverticulitis, whatever, you've got these yeah. different issues. Go to the loom. You will find that you are so excited to use them. You'll be able to make all those things, even socks. If you're a sock knitter, you can keep on it in those socks. Yeah, so. that's awesome. I like that you mentioned, you know, if you're having issues needle knitting, you can still turn to loom knitting and still do this craft that you love. And I actually want to mention, because, um, you know, we are a craft yarn council and we get calls from people um, just, you know, with questions about different things that we do. And um, I've actually talked to a few people on the phone who have told me that um, they used to knit with needles and they just aren't able to now for whatever health reasons. Mm -hmm. But they're still able to make things because a lot of these people are donating items. They want to use their skills to help people. Yes. So they're still able to keep up the skill that they love because they loom knit. And the health, whatever the health issues are that keep them from knitting with needles, 
they those things don't keep them from knitting with a loom. Yes. So I really like that you mentioned that. It's a really cool thing about mm -hmm. loom knitting. Um, great. So I just wanted to open it up. We're pretty much at the end. Um, does anybody have any questions for me or for Kristen, especially about loom knitting or what she does or just anything that we've talked about? We would love um, to get your questions and you know, answer them live if we can. And mm -hmm. if we don't, we can go back in the comments and answer the questions that you have. Because um, we always want to hear from you guys, our audience, about uh, you know, did you like the interview? What you know, did you have questions about things we talked about? So, any questions are totally welcome. And um, yeah, do we have any questions right now? Well, while we're waiting, I have something to add if you want. Perfect. Okay. I love so. Yes. <laughs> well, um, I've I've come across people who um, say they crochet. Um, maybe they crocheted because someone tried to teach them how to knit when they were younger mm, yeah. or they left-handed and yeah. they just it was just like a pain point mm -hmm. so there are a lot of people who find that loom knitting or they don't even know yet what they're going to be excited about later but by, by loom knitting I'm yeah. like come over to the loomy side because the loomy you will side. be so happy that you did yeah and, you know sometimes it's like a it's a gateway tool too because <laughs> like sometimes people have to get that motion of making the stitch and seeing the knit stitch like that's what that looks like yeah like, that's, you know, or like people who have a tr trouble purling or something like yeah how do I get it to purling. purl like I don't understand yeah. and then like the whole right side wrong side thing yeah and, like yeah it's a great and everything on the loom is always on the right side I like that yeah well I I knit and crochet like I knit with needles and I crochet and I started crocheting before I started knitting and I I have to say it right now I do prefer crochet because just to me it's easier and I do love knitting but I just like I've been wanting to get into loom knitting and this whole, all of this just makes me want to start now. And I feel like, like you said, maybe it'll be a gateway for me and I'll, <laughs> once I get into loom knitting, like knitting will start to make more sense to yeah. me. Um, yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we had um, Dama Knits Creations said, I didn't know you can knit everything on a loom. So cool, I'll have to try it. So, yeah. I mean, did you want to expound on that? Like, literally anything. Okay, so for example, this one right here. This is a great example. This hat was made, I, I didn't bring it, it's a big loom. It's a round loom with an inner circle and outer circle. Oh. And so you can double knit in the round. Oh, yeah. And it has cables. Yeah, cables. So cables. these are like a two by two cable. Nice. <laughs> So um, the possibilities you, are endless. Yeah, the possibilities are endless. I, I even have a, a little loom knit princess crown over there. Um, if you actually, if you grab that first cow there, I'd really love to show this. This is my favorite. I taught this at a retreat. Um, this is the chic retreat cowl, Ooh. and it's got the Indian cross stitch on it, and it's actually got a, it's actually got a stitch on here that I've converted two needles because there oh. is no stitch for that. So look, it looks wow. like I've added some crochet onto that. Oh, it does. It looks like a little crochet. <laughs> like it, it looks like there's a triple or something. Yeah. On there. We'll have to post a picture of it later so you guys yeah. can see it close yeah, up. It's kind of hard to see on the camera right yeah. now. I need to knit it in like a lighter color too. <laughs> yeah. But this was, this was in 2012, but I do have a video on how to do it. So. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we'll try to yeah. link to that too. And it's on the all-in-one loom too. Oh. Very nice. Okay. So we have, um, I think... Um, Matter Rich, uh, she said, what's the best loom brand? Oh, you want me to play favorites? <laughs> no, but you can definitely tell, like, some, some of the looms that you have out on the table. Yeah. Well, yeah, so I'll just, this, okay, I'll tell you a favorite loom. It is discontinued, but the, it's, so, uh. it's so popular that this other company has made their own version of it. So um, Nifty Knitter, uh, Provocraft, used to be around, and they made all these looms that were great and had great pegs and stuff. So this is what's called the 48-inch round adult hat loom. It's the, people call it the purple loom because it's the only purple one besides this one. This is a newer one. But anyway, it's got 48 pegs, and it's a what we call a regular gauge, and it's kind of an average, um, like a US uh, 8 needle. But anyway, it makes some really great hats. I've got some great hats hidden somewhere with it. But Cindy Wood made one, and then she put all these purple pegs in there because she can. And so because <laughs> she can because she can and so she made an alternate to that so that's one of my favorites i love this this is a, for a new one from it comes in a three set from knitting board and they're plastic so they're lightweight mm -hmm. um i don't always like the plastic looms yeah. but uh, because i am limited too because i mean some of these have sliders and they can do more yeah. things but like this one is a three eighths gauge there's like a us um, seven or even down to a six needle depending upon the there and actually here's an interesting thing so in loom knitting, um, there's actually a couple of different types of knit stitches. 
Because okay. you oh. can change your gauge. So if yeah. I use a flat knit, it's going to be really drawn in. Yeah. And I can really get that thing to a tighter um, gauge. Mm -hmm. Or I can use what we call true knit, which is like matches really well. They're both V-shaped stitches. Mm -hmm. And then we have um, another one, which is a U. Uh, it's called a U-wrap, and it's actually faster to do. Um, but it, they, uh, they have different ways to do it. And then yeah. the E-wrap, that I do want everybody to know this. So when you, um, when you see normal loom knit stuff and you're like, oh, it's so weird because like the V stitch is like a Y, mm. they're all knit through the back loop. That's the E-wrap oh, stitch. Okay. So if you see people like circling around their pegs and like yeah, yeah. doing that, that it's all E-wrap. So it's really stretchy and open. Oh. And so it's got a bad wrap because people <laughs> will use that from yeah. this. The, it's, a manu it's an old school manufacturer instruction thing. Yeah. And so... You, you can make other really beautiful things. I mean, EWRAP has its place, or Knit Through the Back Loop has its place, but you don't see a lot of knitters doing yeah. that because it, well, it takes too long anyway. Yeah. It's great for adding some stretchy features I and like some that. other stuff, yeah. but it's it has its place. And that's why it's gotten a bad rap in years before. People like, I can rap. tell that's loom knitted, but if, yeah. I've worn yeah. this out before and I've worn this to knitting stores and they're like, oh, that's so pretty, where's the pattern? I'm like, well, it's a loom knit pattern. And they're like, what, what? <laughs> So, yeah. um, okay, so we have a question from TL Yarncross. Hey, Tony. Oh, hey. Um, okay, so she said, what's a beginner loom knitting pattern? What's a good, good, good beginner loom knitting pattern? Oh, I have a bunch of them on my website. You can go to goodknitkisses.com and check them out. I mean, I don't know. The, a good beginner one, like, is just generically um, making a scarf, you know, making a hat. Yeah. Um, a hat's probably the fastest and easiest thing to get that, you know, quick. <laughs> yeah, I, th yeah. I I was thinking like when I finally get to actually loom knitting, I'll probably make a hat first because yeah. it just seems like yeah. So if you pick a round loom, you know. yeah, like this one. This is from Boy. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, so Boy, um, and the, their their um, pegs are a little bit different. They have kind of a crochet hook. That's thing. I was gonna say. They the pegs look like a crochet hook. That's yeah. really interesting. Yeah, and th this is a small gauge, but then we have like a lo and looms have their own gauge terminology. But I do oh, have more information okay. on my site. It's free to see. But we'll get we'll get Craft Yarn Council set up. But it tells you the different yarn needles and stuff that it kind of goes with and what yarn is, um, uh, yarn needles, it sounds like, different needles <laughs> that, that work well with different loom gauges and then the yarn that's best for them. So, gotcha. but this, this one right here, they can be even more spread out. And this is a really popular one, especially this little one. Yeah. Because people make like a preemie hat. Yeah. And then like, so if you're like, I want to make some hats for babies yeah. in the hospital, Make yourself one of these. That's the fastest That's thing. Odd. Yeah. Or just keep knitting it in a tube and then make yourself a scarf that way. And you can like just sew up the ends, add a tassel, whatever. Hmm. Like that's the fastest way to do it. Here's a, oh, this is the larger one. Oops. So it's the same thing. It's just okay. larger. So this would be like an adult? This would be more like, well, the circumference on it, um, this would be more like a toddler size. Oh, oh, wow. Um, okay. Like this is a, an adult. <laughs> I don't know much about. This is a thing we do. We're like, does it fit? Uh <laughs> It'll draw up looms. The only thing, the other thing about looms is the stitches are really, um, they're stretched out with normal loom, and then as you knit more, it'll yeah, close up. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought, but I wasn't yeah. entirely so sure. So sometimes you have to do a provisional bind off and like just put a yarn, scrap yarn through, pull gotcha. it off, and check your measurement. Gotcha. So that's kind of, I could talk forever. You have to shut me up. So. All right. Okay, well, we have another question. We have another question. <laughs> we have, we have several questions. So um, <laughs> can you convert a knit pattern to the loom? Yes, yes. You, have you? Is that in this book? Or it, no? it is. Uh -huh. She has a book. Yeah, <laughs> I have some conversion stuff in this book, and I have a chart actually in here. But I, so I have more in in the book than on my site. But on my site, I actually have a handy dandy chart, uh, kind of like handy dandy notebook, nor Dora, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it it shows you um, what stitch will convert over. So say if you're on the, so everything is on the right side. So any rows that are right side, it's going to be the same. But all the wrong side stuff, we have to convert over. Yeah. Just like you would have to do if you're going to take a hat pattern, but you want to turn it into a scarf, mm -hmm. you would have to take all every other row and do it the opposite stitch, yeah. right? So we have a little chart, which is actually really good for needle knitters because then they can see how to convert it. So yeah. you could use the same chart for you. Okay. It's the same thing. So That's if I knit cool. on one side, I purl on the other. Yeah. So if I flip it, I've got to knit on the front. Yeah. So like okay, so knit, if you want to do stock and knit on a um, on a hat, mm -hmm. or even on a scarf back and forth flat panel, it's all knit stitches, no purl. Blessings, because I'm not good at purl. <laughs> 
Love that knit stitch though. <laughs> Do so, we have any? I think we have one um, more question. Right? So Untangled Yarn said cute crown when you put the when y'all put the oh, yeah, looms yeah, on yeah. your head. I blew past that, but yeah. No, no, no. Well, no, that too. That's yeah, cute. Yeah. I'm talking about when y'all put the oh. looms on your head. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> here, here we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it does not fit me, but, you know. Hello, my baby. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a thing. So, um, uh, Cherie Alexis Johnston said, I had no idea you, the E-wrap is a knit through the back stitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah right. twisted knit. Twisted knit. And got a little love. She also said, Kristen has the most amazing patterns and videos on Good Knit Kisses. Aww. She just finished a baby sandal, which I think we have. <gasps> oh, Yay! Oh, that's it. <laughs> change your voice when you do baby stuff. It's, it's so, so cute! cute. Look at this cute little bunny. And we have little booties down here, oh, too. Yeah, and we have a bonnet and everything. Like, you can do that. The There's this oh. all-in-one loom. There's, they have a sock loom, which is a little smaller. And I made them on that. Look how cute! <laughs> A little bonnet. bonnet. It's just a simple flat panel with is little. Is this? Does this? This. Yeah. Goes this, this is a mitered square with picots on it. Oh yeah. There's some pico. Pico boo. Ooh. I actually oh, call it so pico cute. boo, like B O O. Pico. Um, also, someone, if you're interested in doing beginner patterns for loom knitting, someone said washcloths are good for yes. beginner. For yeah, I feel like are. any yarn craft, a washcloth mm-hmm. is like... Yeah, that purple one's a... It could be a washcloth oh, or yeah. a larger blanket. We did that for Lion Brand a few years ago, and it's... I mean, I just made a small sample, but mm-hmm. you could just keep getting bigger and yeah. bigger. But this is kind of that classic, you know, that you've seen. So it's like yeah. knit from here you know, mm-hmm. goes wider and then goes down. So, mm-hmm. or you can knit it, you know, straight. Okay. Yeah. So we have a question from Pokio Pono. She said, is it easier to teach a seven-year-old to knit stitch on a loom or to knit like with needles? Mm. It depends on the, you know, it, it's the thing. All people are different. So yeah. seven, the old, seven-year-olds are same as 97-year-old. It's whatever works for them. Um, I think it's easier just to give them a loom and, and, um, and give them the basics, hey, E-wrap, and then they kind of get the enjoyment out of doing it faster, but yeah. um, it just depends. Um, I mean, I don't want to ever say, because I love needle knitting, too. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say some, you know, I don't know. I, I like, kind of, yeah, because yeah, some people are like, oh, it's way faster. I, I learned easier on this than yeah. that. But no, I mean, come to the loomy side, try the loom. I'm gonna I'm a come to the loom. I don't know about y'all. I, I do think it's easier um, to do the looms, especially like say you have like a whole bunch of kids and you're trying to do an after school activity. I mean, outfitting them with a bunch of these, there's a lot less like hands on, okay, you have to do this, and you can have yeah. a, teach a larger amount of people yeah. loom knitting at the same time. I taught a class of 30 adults, and you know, but I had to have a couple of assistants. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a lot, a lot of people. Yeah. So, anyway. Cool. Any more? Questions or comments? If you want, we can show you a chevron stitch. There's one in purple right over there. Oh, yeah, this is so cute. Yeah, so we did this. um, So, yeah, this little, we did this. This is just a little levy. This is my sample size. When I make a video, I don't always do a big full thing. But yeah, so this was, um, I've got a loom one and um, one on needles. What yarn is this? This is uh, Bernat Beyond. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, the same as. Yeah. yeah, no. Wait. Oh, it's not. This was, oh, this is Home Deck. I don't know home why I said deck. Beyond earlier. This is home, Burnett Home Deck. Either way, this is really cute. Oh yeah, gosh. and that's Beyond. So. Very nice. So, um, Cherie Alexis Johnson says she's working on a blanket right now. So, oh, yeah. Nice. Yay. Yeah, yeah really nice. you can do big projects, little projects, whatever. All of the projects. Whatever your flavor. Yeah. And then right. we have this one up here. Oh, it's yeah. kind of hard to see, but um, it's this, this is a cool new stitch. Uh, this is made on the loom, and then it, it has, like, this gathered shoulder thing. I'm, like, holding my arms up. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it has this really cool gathered shoulder thing. So I did that on needles and on the on the loom. So, um, so we had someone just say that um, that was on the loom. That's awesome. So I think you guys were talking about that swatch with the, no, with the oh, Maker with the Beyond. Chevron? Yeah, the Chevron. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is this, this what you were talking about? I think so. Yeah, that's the back. This yeah, one. that's on the loom. Yeah. That's the wrong side, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Either way. There's, there you go. You know, because the pearls are a little yeah. bit, yeah, the change color part. Yeah, it's it's really, well, and this one's like super soft. And it really. is. That's why I was like, what yarn is this? <laughs> yeah. Cool. It's All one right. of my favorites. Oh, um, someone just asked, can you talk about needle and loom knit? Um, well, I mean, I think we kind of covered yeah. that earlier, yeah. but, 
Yeah. Um, we'll, we're definitely going to post it mm-hmm. so you can watch all everything that um, we've talked about since we've been on. And we're gonna ha- it's going to be live for 24 hours. So just go check it out. We, she talked a lot about um, the needle and loom knit. Yeah, so. the, yeah, different yeah. Things, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I can tell you real quick, and this is a peek at my, my own book, but like, so if you have a, um, so uh, we talk about C to C, center to center. It's the measurement of uh, the distance between one peg to the next. It's really the center of one peg to the center of one peg, but I think it's easier to like measure along the line where the little groove is to the next line mm-hmm. on the same side. And that helps you, um, it's, it's the measured distance um, of the peg to peg, but depending upon the thickness of the peg, mm-hmm. And the spacing, sometimes something like like this big giant one here, this is a zippy loom. <laughs> the spacing on here is like about an inch and a half. But this one over here has like a much thinner yeah. um, uh, peg, but it's a little bit bigger spacing. So I yeah. would have to test these samples. I would have to swatch yeah. these to see what that stitch is going to develop like. Mm-hmm. So, um, but in order to... M- in order to match them to needles, I usually will get the right needle and make a swatch and then yeah, <laughs> do the yeah. other. But do, I do have a chart, and it's even on my site, but it talks about, say, um, like the 3 eighths that I was talking about. Um, a 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths, and 7 sixteenths measurement is what we call a small gauge, and that can go that can range in needle sizes from 5 to 8, which is a pretty good average yeah. size. That's why I'm saying that one. But say you wanted to use a needle size range from either a needle 3 size to like a 6, like 3.25 millimeter, like four millimeter, then that would be a fine gauge uh, like this, this one here. Oh, yeah. And then you'd be working with like a US one to three yarn. So depending yeah. upon the yarn, that can change the gauge too. So you have a little bit more um, flex and in, in what in, 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 in to match someone else's gauge. Like, yeah. oh, we'll just, just dial down the yarn or yeah. whatever, change exactly. the stitch, make it tighter or whatever. So yeah, they go all the way up to you know, uh, anyway, I mentioned all of those on here, but like, uh, yeah. What's the like, name of the book? Oh, this one, uh, this one's my personal one. It's um, Good Knit Kisses Loom Knitting Guide and Patterns. Looks like this. It's, I've got a, um, a PDF. It's on Ravelry or you can download oh, okay. it. Um, uh, there's a Kindle version online, but I don't like people to do that one because I think it works better in the PDF on Ravelry, but, mm-hmm. but you can actually print on demand anywhere worldwide. Awesome. That's, like Barnes yeah. & Noble and Amazon. Yeah. So. so. Not a plug for my book, but it just I just happen to have it. It's easier yeah. for me to have this and refer to it. Sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but some of these charts are on my website. I just had so many people asking me for hard information yeah. on some of this stuff. And I'm like, okay. We'll get that together. Yeah. Right. Okay, our last question that we'll take is, how much do looms cost? Oh, gosh, they range. <laughs> that I can tell you, I remember how much that set was that I bought. So that first loom I got was a set of four, and it was $13.97 at Walmart in 2010. <laughs> so I got four looms for, for that. Yeah. But I could spend um I could spend fifty dollars on that double knit loom, that double knit round loom. Yeah. I think it's like forty to fifty dollars. Some are, some go up to sixty. It just depends. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. It kind of it's just it kind a of wide ranges. Range. Is there like are the like plastic ones? I'm assuming less expensive than like yes. the wooden ones. Well, yeah. yeah, and those particular ones from KISS, um, those are they're all handmade these are also made in the u.s and what's interesting like see this one has these the space in here Mm -hmm. you actually can wind the the yarn around all these pin and pegs and go back and forth and then when you knit over it's um it's not like an e-wrap where you're e-wrapping it but you're actually making a really traditional knit stitch it makes a really even stitch but so we add these little spacers in but all these little pins, Kelly, the owner, she hand puts them all in. Yeah, and these ones are more adjustable. Too, they are totally whereas adjustable. Whereas these are, you just have this one size. Right. Like this. Yeah. And you know, this is more like I, I'm budget friendly, and yeah. this one's like I am a serious loom knitter. Yeah. I want to do all the things. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So you, you can, and, and you can make a variety of things on those. So I don't like to plug just one. I don't like to be just for one manufacturer because everything has its part. And, yeah. But, um, like, some people only want to make dishcloths, only yeah. want to make, you know, hats, only want to make socks. Like, some people are just sock knitters. And it's just like in needles. We all mm-hmm. have our preference. Exactly. I like, to, thankfully, I like to do a variety of yeah. things so I can show more things. Mm-hmm. I'm not, you know, I'm like, oh, I never do this. Well, I don't do socks that much just because, I don't know. I'm a cowgirl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to say it like that. I, mean, I love making cows. That's yeah. my thing. So, yeah. 
Um, we actually did have one question pop up that we'll just answer. And this is our last question, guys. Our oh, no. One. We have two more. Two more <laughs> questions. Because it's a really good one. So, I want I want to get to them. Video. Yeah. <laughs> know, yeah. Um, so, Polka Yono Pono, again, she asks, what type of yarn is best for newborns? And is there a particular yarn that you prefer to use for all projects? Oh, well, well, that's that. I think that's more of a craft yarn council question because that it's the same in loom as it is in yeah. Years. That's what I was thinking. It's the same for. I mean, it's the yarn, so it's going to be the same for knitting versus with needles versus loom knitting. Uh, gener I mean, we had a um, tiny hats for tiny babies campaign last fall for Warm Up America, which is our partner charity, mm -hmm. and we generally suggested that people use like a softer yarn a baby yarn, like a yarn specifically for babies and more like um, fun colors like this, mm -hmm. like baby, you know, like lighter or pastels versus like these kind of colors. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I definitely would say for babies, whether you're knitting with needles or loom knitting or even crocheting or whatever you're, however you're making the baby item, a mm -hmm. softer yarn yeah. is best for babies. Yeah, softer and usually thin, and it yeah. kind of has a drape to it. Yeah. You know? um, if there's, if you're at a store that has knitted samples, I like to kind of touch yeah. and feel the samples. Those are better than just yeah. squishing the yarn. I usually kind of, I, would, I say, I molest my yarn. I stick my fingers <laughs> in the end. I like stick my fingers in the end and like feel how it yeah. feels. It's so awful. But that's but no, but yeah, but it works. But I will say, um, if you're doing that specifically for charity, I always tell people call your charity. Write down all the questions yeah. and say, do you have requirements? Yes. Because and there's nothing worse than get, sending it and, it and then they, they get trashed. That's actually a really great point because we actually get calls mm -hmm. in the office like every single day of people, they just want to make sure like, can I use this yarn, this pattern, this stitch, this color, whatever it is. Um, and for Warm Up America, we generally accept, as long as you can wash the yarn, we mm -hmm. accept. But yeah, for babies, definitely softer, but if you are donating for charity, check just to make sure you yeah. know you never know because if it has 10 percent wool maybe they will or they won't yeah, take it and exactly. if you don't want to make all these things and yeah. then they just turn you down i mean you, you're like oh i have to send it somewhere else no. so is there a particular yarn that each of you can answer this that you prefer when you for using on projects like with you on the loom and with you with like crochet or knitting crochet. oh yeah. just use all the time yeah like just c can't keep going back to I don't know. I, I love the Bernat <laughs> Beyond. I, I, I do love yeah, that, but so I have some other ones that I love too. I really like, um, I really like roving. Oh yeah. I really love knitting and crocheting, knitting on needles. I really love knitting and crocheting with roving. Mm -hmm. I always come, well, not always, but I, I use roving a lot. Um, and just me personally, I like a, a, li a little chunkier yarn. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely don't really ever knit or crochet with like a lace weight yes. or any honestly anything smaller than worsted weight yarn. Mm -hmm. I always am worsted or like a bigger weight um, yeah. just because I just prefer I just prefer knitting and crocheting with the thicker. Yeah, I'm usually yarn. worsted and up. Sometimes yeah. I'll do like a DK or something. Yeah, and, um, I mean I, I have do... with a smaller, but yeah, not as often. I will say you know, nothing beats like a silk yarn like with like a beading That's in it true. for like oh. some lace weight, little yeah. lightweight. Um, yeah. yeah, so yeah. those are fun too, but I don't do them as much. Yeah, I mostly do like worsted or or bigger weight. Okay, so I have a sister of nine years old, uh, and I'm teaching her how to stitch on a loom, but sometimes she loses patience. What would you advise for me on how to not lose patience? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I'm really patient on my videos, and so when you watch the video, if you can pause it, you know, and even the mobile, they have changed it to where you can actually change the speed of the video. Oh, Do you know yeah. that? I did not. That. Yeah, That's they really updated cool. that like sometime last year and I'm like, huh. shut up, I've been asking you forever. <laughs> so you can, um, there's a little gear icon or something, it depends on the, the device you're using, but you can usually slow it, slow it down and I sound a little drunk, you know, it was like, hello, you know, it slows it down. Yeah. Or like you can speed it up. So if it's like in a talky section yeah. and you're like, I got it. But you don't want to miss something, just turn it to like one and a half or two times the speed. Yes, that's something that happens to me. Sometimes when yeah. I'm watching a video, I'll like keep going back or like 
trying to move it to a different point. I'm like, dang yeah. it, I missed something, so I have to, like, keep messing yeah. with it. So that's, like, that's cool. So, but for kids, like, my own kids, like, I'm not even kidding. I, so I have these water, they're, like, these balloons that use a, a loom, kind of like this, has 24 pegs. It's from, it's a, it's an old empty knitter one, so they're a little, they're a little bigger open. We do these um, loom knit water balloons, and you dunk them, they're using, like, acrylic or, like, Bernat blanket. Yeah. And you dunk them in water and throw them at people. It's like a water balloon, but it doesn't, that's... like, you don't have to pick up the pieces. Yeah. And, oh, um, yeah. but my kids weren't getting it when I was teaching them in person and I was like just watch me watch on the screen me. <laughs> and so I had them like in the tv room and I would like put it on pause or slow and then they were like okay what did she say and I'm like it's me you know <laughs> so I'm not even kidding you use the video yeah <laughs> videos that's how once I they get it things. they'll start making their own stuff I mean yeah. that's that's a cool thing once you get someone making up their own stuff wow you know it's, the kids are really going. good they have no fear yeah that's true that's a good point Get them started early. Yeah. All, all right. right. Well, those are all the questions we have um, right now. So uh, you we're at the end. It's the end of the, the interview, the video. So Kristen, thank you so much oh, for being here and talking with us about all of this, the, you know, all the awesome things you can do with loom knitting. Mm -hmm. And thank you everyone for watching and tuning in today. Um, again, this video is going to be on our Instagram for 24 hours and we're going to save it. We're probably going to post it to YouTube. We'll have it Facebook somewhere Facebook. available for yeah. you. So, um, again, thanks for tuning in, and we hope that y'all have a great day. One more thank thing you. before oh. we leave. We do have a longer interview. Yes. We have more questions to ask. Yeah, we have. So, so <laughs> um, we're going to have another longer video on YouTube. Um, we just wanted to have this open yes. forum where you can ask questions. But go, you'll be able to check it out in, a, I don't know, probably about a week or two. Yeah. Um, and be able to see uh, and hear all of the things that we ask her and, and just learn more about knitting in general so thank you guys for tuning yeah, in bye. Thanks for having and they're me. all bye. people are saying thank you oh you're welcome thank you for all the hard work <laughs> so thank you guys bye, everybody. bye. bye.